Hello friends, welcome to Fairs Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important current fairs of 16th of September 2021. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current fairs. So watch this video till last. But I am requesting you all the students that you can download our application careers cloud from the description box link. After that you can log in with the email id and then you can click on this crack current fair section to subscribe a current fairs for one year as well as for two year. Both the subscription prices are very much low, but we are covering 90 to 95% of that current fair which can come in your exam. This is the genuinity of Affairs Cloud team. This is the hard work of Affairs Cloud team. So how we are covering this current fair? We are providing you daily section. In the daily section, you will receive three things. One is the detail. Second is the question and answer format of the current fair of particular day. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, you will receive three things. One is the detail. Second is the question and answer format of current fairs on weekly basis. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt on an application on weekly basis. And the most important section is the monthly. And we are providing four type of PDFs. One is the detail current fairs, question and answer format, best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and the pocket PDF. It is the two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs very quickly before your exam. But to enhance your performance further, we are providing you topic wise current fair and we are covering 20 most important topics which are very important for every type of exam. So if you want to cover uh, special particular top topics, then you can cover from this uh, type of section. If you are a banking student, we are providing three things. One is the detail. Second is the question and answer format of current fairs only related to banking and economy. And third is the quiz section, which you can attempt only on our application on monthly basis. But this quiz is only related to banking and economy. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. And we are also providing detailed budget and economic survey. Expected question and answer will be provided so that you can revise before your exam. And uh, if you are appearing for your respective state exam, we are also providing state current fairs and we are providing every state and union territory current fair. So you can prepare for every state exam and every union territory exam if you want. So all these things uh, comes under only one subscription. You have to just download our application careers cloud from the description box link. You have to log in with the email ID. You have to click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. If you see, you will definitely surprise. But if you are just starting your preparation, you are starting your uh, current fairs, then I am advising you to subscribe for two years because there is no price difference, basically very less price difference between the one year and the two year subscription. Even we are providing 10% extra discount on both subscriptions if you use this code ASH10. If you have any query, you can reach us on this email ID or you can call us on this number. So let's start today's that is 16th of September 2021 current fairs. But first of all, you have to like this video. You have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you're new on this platform. And remember, you can join a telegram group from the description box. So here's the first question in the most important section. Who named as 2021 International Young Eco Hero? So it means this award is basically related to the conservation or the protection of the environment. So that's why this award is known as 2021 International Young Eco Hero. And this award goes to Ayan Shankta. So answer of this question is B. B is the answer. You can just remember the name Ayan. So Ayan Shankta is just, uh, uh, you can say, 12-year-old boy, environmental activist from which state? From Maharashtra. Exact place is Mumbai. Has been named as 2021 International Young Echo Hero. And you can also see here the picture of Ayan. And uh, Ayan, 12-year-old environmental activist, belongs to Maharashtra. And he won the third prize under the age group of 8 to 14 for his project named as Conservation and Rehabilitation of the Powai Lake, which is also stated in Mumbai. It is artificial lake stated in Mumbai. And he became one of the 25 global winners of the Young Echo Hero Award 2021. And this award is basically presented by the Action for Nature. The Action for Nature. And uh, it is a San Francisco or United States of America based uh, NGO recognize young people between the age of 18 to 16 for their environmental achievement. So that's why this award given to this person or this boy. So you have to remember the name is Ayan. But other appoint, uh, other uh, awards are very important, not appointments uh, like uh, Cyrus Punawala, father of uh, Adar Punawala. And uh, he was recently awarded as Lok Manya, Lok Manya Tilak National Award. Lok Manya Tilak National Award of 2021 won by Cyrus Punawala. Mohammed Azam. 
uh, he recently won national youth award national youth award and this award is presented by ministry of youth affairs and sports and new uh, minister of youth affairs and sports is anurag thakur anurag thakur so this award is given by anurag thakur this is national youth award and this is given to mohammad azam next is nn pillai very famous poet from kerala and uh, he recently awarded with bahrain bahrain kerala 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 basically uh, samajam so this is the name of award bahrain kerala samajam literary award of 2021 goes to nn pillai so you have to remember all these awards but 2021 international young echo hero for the ayan and uh, he's 12 year old boy so you can see here this is the picture of ayan Moving to next question, who has been received seventh Yamin Hazarika Woman of Substance Award 2021? Again, very famous writer, and uh, she won this award because this is Substance Woman of Substance Award, and it is seventh Yamin Hazarika Award, and this is goes uh, this award goes to Namita Gokhale. So answer of this question is C. So a uh, very famous writer Namita Gokhale received the 7th Yamin Hazarika Women of Substance Award of year 2021 during the virtual ceremony. You can also see here the uh, picture of uh, this lady Namita Gokhale. She is the co-founder and the co-editor of Jaipur Literature Festival, very famous festival in Jaipur and uh, she is the co-founder and the co-director of this literature festival. And uh, Gokhale also mentors Himalayan Echoes and the Kumaon Festival of Literature and the Arts in various states. and the award was presented by collective of women professionals from the year of 2015 and she was the first woman this lady was the first woman from the north east india to be selected for denips what is the meaning of denips denips stands for uh, delhi andaman and nicobar island police service a federal police service that administered delhi and the union territory in 1977 so uh, she was the first woman from the north east india to be selected for this service So you have to just remember very famous writer named as Namita Gokhale who was awarded with seventh Yamin Hazarika Women of Substance Award 2021. But guys, you can also remember that uh, this Shamla Ghosh, also very famous lady, uh, she recently won Order of Rising Sun, Order of Rising Sun, Order of Rising Sun, one of the highest award by the Japanese government. Next is K K Shailja, former Health Minister of Kerala. she recently won open society prize open society prize of 2021 and this prize was given by central european university central european university for her work in the public health services next justice geeta mittal again very famous name and she recently won a line pact award a line pact global vision award of 2021 you have to just remember a line pact so again all the awards are very famous because uh, in two questions we covered eight awards so it means this is most important section so now we are moving to very important question section you have to like this video you have to share this video you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and join our telegram group from the description box link here is the question the first ever national engineers day was observed in which year because every student i think know that uh, national engineer day is annually observed across india on the 15th of september on 15th of september to mark the birth anniversary of eminent engineer and the bharat ratan sir moksh gundam vishweshwarai so uh, 15th of september every year celebrated but first time it was celebrated in the year of 1968 d is the answer and it was declared by the then prime minister indra gandhi indra gandhi so you can see here National Engineers Day 15th of September 2021 and the day commemorates the achievements of the engineers and encourages them for the improvement uh, and innovation and uh, it is the in 2021 it is the 54th National Engineers Day because first time it was celebrated in 1968 and uh, you have to remember Moksh Gundam Visheshwarai very famous person and he was popularly known as the father of modern Mysore father of modern Mysore because of his contribution to the society you can say and he served as the diwan of mysore diwan of mysore from 1912 to 1918 when mysore was the princely state and founded the mysore and uh, he was also founded the mysore soap factory mysore soap factory uh, bengaluru agriculture university and state bank of mysore so much contribution of this person which is known as moksh gundam visheshwarai so you have to remember all these things so you can also uh, uh, see here these two countries one is the sri lanka second is the tanzania also celebrates this engineer day to honor sir 
M or the Moksha Gundam Visheshwaraya innovation. So two countries, one is Sri Lanka and Tanzania. This is again very important point. Examiner can pick up this point like Sri Lanka and Tanzania. The National Engineers Day 2021 marks the 160th birth anniversary of this Sir Moksha Gundam Visheshwaraya. and he was properly known as the father of modern mysore i already told you because uh, he founded the mysore soap factory uh, bangalore agriculture university and also state bank of mysore which is now merged under the uh, state bank of india so you can remember all these things about engineers day move to next question which union territory launched this digital banking mission which is known as one gram panchayat one dg pay sakhi so the keyword here is the dg pay sakhi one dg pay sakhi in one gram panchayat and it is launched by jammu and kashmir and who is the lieutenant or the lieutenant governor of jammu and kashmir it is manoj kumar sinha who launched this scheme which is known as uh, uh, which is known as this dg pay sakhi scheme and you can also see here under this mission the dg pay facility will be provided to the more than 2000 remote villages of the jammu and kashmir through this dg sakhi pay system and uh, the dg pay sakhi has introduced financial inclusion within the jammu and kashmir self help group ecosystem by creating financial access points with the transparency in the remote areas because in the first phase 80 women from the self help groups across jammu and kashmir division have been selected as the dg pay sakhi it means these women will act as dg pay sakhi and first in the first phase 80 women will be trained and manoj sinha also distributed 80 aadhar enabled payment system 80 aadhar based uh, payment system among the dg pay sakhi under jammu and kashmir rural livelihood mission so that they can do the transactions they can provide the financial services to the rural areas in jammu and kashmir and uh, uh, manoj sinha also stated that three new initiatives of the uh, for dg pay krishi and the pashu sakhi and other women empowerment programs like hausla recently was launched by jammu and kashmir tejaswani was also launched by jammu and kashmir and ummeed these programs was launched by jammu and kashmir and uh, all these programs rise together will speed up the efforts of the jammu and kashmir to empower women and make them a part of the development of the jammu and kashmir so in simple word you can say in every uh, village panchayat or every gram panchayat one dg pay sakhi will be appointed so that all the banking services will be provided to the rural areas of the jammu and kashmir and we can develop the jammu and kashmir very soon so this is the target and remember lieutenant governor is manoj sinha and very famous national park is there dachigam national park slim ali national park is also there kishtwad national park is also there very famous kishtwad and uh, you can also remember gulmarg wildlife sanctuary is again very famous moving to next question who is appointed as the president of international road federation india this question is not so much important but uh, we are talking about appointment that's why we are covering in the very important section uh, president of international road federation india so international road federation uh, is a organization which is situated in geneva and it's uh, it's uh, one of the regional offices also situated in india headquarters in new delhi but its global headquarters is in geneva and uh, who was appointed as the president of this international road federation india and it is satish parekh so answer of this question is d so uh, ashoka buildcon managing director he is currently the uh, managing director of ashoka buildcon and uh, he is appointed as uh, the president of international road federation india office and he succeeded uh, shubhme uh, 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 gangopadhyay uh he was the former director of this central road research institute but you have to just remember the name uh, don't confuse it with other appointments so just remember the name satish parekh and he is appointed as the international road federation india and you can also remember the other appointments here very important like nk singh is there he was recently appointed as the new president of institute of economic growth institute of economic growth society shantilal jain very important appointment because he was recently reappointed as the md and ceo of the indian bank md and ceo of indian bank again very important nupur chaturvedi most important question guys we covered this question in the most important section uh, recently appointed she is recently appointed as the chief executive officer of bharat bill payment system by the npci national payment corporation of india npci head is dilipas bay dilipas bay npci was established in 2008 so all these things are very very important which country co-chaired 18th asean india economic ministers consultation so again very important question because we are talking about very important organization asean is there and asean india economic ministers consultation meeting was held and it is uh, 18th meeting and it is co-chaired by india as well as brunei because brunei has the current chairmanship of asean of 2021 
that's why answer of this question is a and c so d is the answer a and c so you can see here india assures asian partners for its sports in its recovery efforts in the past pandemic uh, period but you can also remember this lady here this lady is very important uh, you can also see here uh, it was attended by the economic ministers of all the 10 asian countries all the 10 asian countries and this lady is anupriya patel anupriya patel who is currently the minister of state for commerce and industry minister of state for commerce and industry so she represented uh, india under this meeting so this is the 18th meeting and in this meeting india has given its key focus on the mass vaccination capacity enhancement and economic initiatives to address the pandemic and uh, total asian countries are 10 like brunei is there cambodia indonesia laos Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. Remember India, China is not the member of this organization. India, China, Pakistan are not member of this organization. So this is important. And uh, reform taken by the different sectors such as agriculture, banking, insurance, logistic, corporate law, etc. were also discussed. But this is not important. So India is the seventh largest trading partner of ASEAN. This is very important. Seventh largest ASEAN partner, trading partner. And one of the largest sources of the foreign direct investment for India is uh, this uh, ASEAN group. And remember, ASEAN was established in 1967 and it's, uh, it was established in Bangkok, Thailand. Its headquarters is in Jakarta, Indonesia. Jakarta, Indonesia. And 2021 chairmanship lies with Brunei. Brunei, but it is co-chaired by India. So now we are moving to next question. Recently, Dr. Aziz Hajini passed away. He was eminent. So a very famous, uh, you can say writer, so answer of this question is A. So uh, Sahitya Academy winner, Dr. Uh, Abdul Ajiz Pare, or uh, uh, he was uh, known also as uh, Dr. Ajiz Hajini, uh, an eminent Kashmiri writer, poet and critic passed away in the Shirinagar, Jammu and Kashmir. It means he belongs to Jammu and Kashmir. So you also have to remember the name of the state and the profession and the name. These three things are very important. And he also won the Sahitya Academy Translation Award in 2013 for uh, Za Gaz Zameen. Za Gaz Zameen. Za Gaz Zameen uh, is basically a Kashmiri translation of Abdul Samad Urdu novel Do Gaz Zameen. So this is the uh, Kashmiri translation. Uh, in Kashmiri it is known as Za Gaz Zameen. Uh, originally this book was uh, written in uh, uh, you can say Urdu language and it is written by Abdul uh, Samad and name of this book was Do Gaz Zameen. So you can also see here the picture of Aziz Hajini and he was also known as Dr. Abdul Ajiz Pare. Uh, noted Kashmiri writer. So you have to remember this. And he won Sahitya Academy Award in Criticism in 2016 for his book Aane Khane written in Kashmiri. Aziz Hazini has also served as the secretary of the Jammu and Kashmir Academy of Art, Culture and Languages. And uh, he won Sahitya Academy Translation Award in 2013 also. And Sahitya Academy Award in Criticism also. So that's why this writer is very important. So remember three things. Name Dr. Aziz Hazini belongs to Jammu and Kashmir and very famous writer and poet. Move into next question. RBI and the monetary authority of which country will link UPI and pay now? If you know that uh, like UPI, pay now belongs to which country? Like UPI belongs to India. And pay now is a digital platform by which you can do the transactions. It belongs to Singapore. So you can easily answer this question. Answer of this question is A. So in order to ease cross-border payments between India and Singapore, uh, the Reserve Bank of India and the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Monetary Authority of Singapore are all set for the linkage project under which their re respective uh, uh, fast payment system uh, like India's is UPI Unified Payment Interface and PayNow will be linked by the July 2022. This is the deadline that they have to uh, link both the platforms by the year of uh, 2022 and month is July. And the UPI pay now linkage will enable their uses of the UPI to make instant low cost fund transfer without the need of another payment system, especially in India and Singapore. And you can see here RBI Monetary Authority of Singapore announces project to link UPI and pay now. And the decision is on the lines of the G20's financial inclusion priority of the driving faster, cheaper and the more transparent cross border payment because the G20 group decided uh, that we have to start the system, uh, de, uh, start the transaction system digitally so that we can transfer cross-border payment without any, uh, without any contradiction. And uh, uh, the above pact like uh, this uh, between the central bank of the both nations will further boost the trade, travel and the remittance flow between India and Singapore definitely because we can uh, do transactions very fast. 
एंड वन न्यूज यू हैव टू रिमेंबर आर बी इम्पोजिस रुपीज वन लैख पेनल्टी ऑन द कोशाम्बा मर्केंटाइल कॉपरेटिव बैंक सो दिस इज नॉट सो मच इंपॉर्टेंट बट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दे पुट वन लैख पेनल्टी टू दिस कोशाम्बा मर्केंटाइल कॉपरेटिव बैंक यू कैन जस्ट रिमेंबर दैट दिस कोशाम्बा मर्केंटाइल कॉपरेटिव बैंक बिलोंग्स टू सूरत गुजरात एंड द रीजन बिहाइंड दिस पेनल्टी इज नॉन कंप्लायंस विद द डायरेक्शन इशूड बाई दी आर बी आई सो रिमेंबर दीज थिंग्स नाउ वी आर मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन which bank and escorts limited which is uh, uh, you can say farm equipment company farm manufacturing equipment company partner to offer finance to farmers so very simple question you can just remember the question as in slide and name of this bank is indusind bank so answer of this question is d so you can see here escorts tie up with the indusind bank for the finance to the farmers and uh, remember escort limited is escort agriculture machinery limited one of india's leading automotive engineering company and it is to offer financial services to the farmers and to make its range of tractors and the farm equipment more accessible so the partnership between indusind bank and the escort agriculture machinery will enable the farmers to invest in modern farm machinery to increase their farm productivity and income it means to purchase this farm equipments this indusind bank will provide some uh, you can say monetary uh, benefit to the farmers so that they can purchase this farm equipments from the escorts agriculture machinery and the financial services will be provided in form of loans or the agri finance solution and it will be provided by indusind bank and the machinery will be provided by this escort company and uh, you can also remember under this partnership with indusind bank escort aims to provide a transparent hassle free and quick mechanism for the farmers to purchase its agri based product like tractors the main machinery equipment is tractor and it will be provided to the farmers through indusind bank and remember escort headquarters in faridabad faridabad in haryana and you can also remember about indusind bank indusind bank headquarter is in pune maharashtra and it started in 1994 its md and ceo is sumanth sumanth kathpaliya sumanth kathpaliya move into next question who launched space challenge for indian school students in collaboration with indian space research organization and cbs or you can say central board of secondary education and this uh, organization is niti ayog and under niti ayog this is started by atal innovation mission so answer of this question is b so national institution for transforming india's program which is known as atal innovation mission in collaboration with the isro and cbsc launched this atal tinkering lab space challenge 2021 space challenge 2021 its main objective is to enable school students to create innovation for the space technology space technology by the name you can guess because isro is there cbsc is there and atal innovation mission is there so it means it enables school students to create innovation for the space technology so atal innovation mission launched this space challenge for the indian school students and it is being conducted for all the school students mentors and the teachers across the country even if uh, uh, if uh, there is uh, no atal tinkering labs then you can also participate under this challenge and students can take opportunity in creating solutions for uh, these technologies such as uh, explore space reach space uh, inhabit space leverage space etc right means uh, every kind of space technology and the challenge will allow the students from class 6 to 12 to innovate and enable them to solve digital space technology problems so you have to just remember uh, there is a uh, 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 tripartite pact between isro cbsc and the atal innovation mission or the niti yog but you can also remember atal innovation mission is a flagship initiative set up by the niti yog to promote a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship in the country and who is the mission director of the atal innovation mission recently appointed chintan vaishnav chintan vaishnav moving to next question which space technology startup became the first private company to sign mou with the department of space it means this private company can take the benefit of isro and uh, isro will provide technical expertise for testing and qualifying their space launch vehicles system and subsystem and this first private sector startup or the company name is skyroot aerospace so a is the answer so skyroot aerospace is space technological startup become the first private company to formally sign a framework memorandum of understanding with the department of space so you can see here skyroot aerospace you have to just remember this name this name is very important and uh, under this agreement the startup company can undertake multiple test and assess facilities at various isro at various isro center it means they can use isro facilities and uh, skyroot is developing vikram series remember vikram series of rockets to carry small satellites into the space it is it will be launched uh, by uh, skyroots uh, aerospace 
and uh, it has already test fired its solid propulsion rocket engine named as Kalam 5. Kalam 5 and it is uh, its bigger version will power rockets so it is Kalam 5 it is also launched by the Skyroot Aerospace so remember Vikram series and Kalam 5 is also the initiative of the Skyroot Aerospace and it was launched in 2018 its headquarters is in Hyderabad Telangana moving to next question recently two times Olympic gold medalist Yuri Sedek passed away so you have to just remember Yuri Sedek he was hammer thrower of which country so you have to just remember he represented Ukraine. So answer of this question is C. And a double Olympic hammer thrower, uh, gold medalist Yuri Sadiek, a Ukrainian track and the field athlete who represented the Soviet Union uh, till 1991 because after that the Soviet Union bifurcated, has passed away in the Moscow, Russia. And he set the world record for the hammer throw with a throw of 86.74 meter at the European Championship and uh, in 1986 basically. And uh, this is still not broken. So this is the record. This is the world record of throwing hammer at this distance, 86.74. And this record goes lies with Yuri Sedek. And uh, he won his first gold medal in 1976 Olympics in the Montreal, Canada, and the second gold in 1980 Olympics in Moscow in Russia. He also won a silver medal in 1988 Olympics in Seoul. So these are the three medals. One are two gold medals and one is silver medal. So this is won by Yuri Sadik and he was a hammer thrower and uh, he belongs to Ukraine or examiner can ask uh, name of country Russia. So you can remember this. You can also see here the picture of this player double Olympian gold medalist Yuri Sadik passed away. Moving to next question, which state signed an agreement with SIDB to set up an innovation fund to promote startups in the state? So very simple question. You can just remember the question as in slide. Answer of this question is Assam. So uh, Small Industries Development Bank of India, which is also known as SIDB, in association with the Assam government launched an innovation fund to promote startups in the Assam. And it will promote one district, one product initiative. So Assam government to set up innovation fund with the SIDB to promote startup. And uh, you can also remember, uh, under this fund, a critical gap in infrastructure and logistic will be plugged in to promote identified products in each district for export. So SIDB will also promote self-help groups, self-help groups to enterprise level and bring them into the formal sector of economy. So the main, uh, uh, you can say, objective of this fund is to promote startup in the Assam state. And uh, they also launched one district, one product, one district, one product. Uh, recently, uh, um, UP, uh, Uttar Pradesh government also launched one district, one product, one district, one product initiative. And uh, Haryana also launched one uh, city, one product, one city, one product or one area, one product. This is launched by Haryana government. So you can remember this because it is uh, just to uh, become the self-reliant state in every area. So that's why Assam tied up with the SIDB. And you can also remember about SIDB here. Small Industries Development Bank of India it was established in 1990. Its headquarters is in Lucknow. This was asked in so many exams, Lucknow. And its chairman and managing director is Siva Bhushan or you can say Siva Subramanyam Raman. Siva Subramanyam Raman. So he is currently the chairman and managing director. Moving to next question, a uh, woman will be allowed to enter NDA examination or the National Defense Academy Center informs Supreme Court. Uh, Indian Armed Forces allowed the entry of female candidates into the Armed Forces through the National Defense Academy after the intervention of the Supreme Court. And the NDA exam uh, uh, earlier was set to be held on 5th of September but was postponed due to this on the 14th of November after the intervention of the Supreme Court and now female candidates were allowed to appear in the examination. NDA examination only recruits candidates to the Indian Armed Forces through examination conducted by the Union Public Service Commission. And where is the headquarter of this NDA? NDA headquarters is in Pune. Remember, NDA headquarters is in Pune. And uh, it was established in 1954. 1954. Moving to next and very famous player Lasith Malinga announces retirement from all type of formats. So you can remember that earlier uh, he was retired in 2011 from the test cricket in 2019 from ODI cricket, now from all formats he retired. So very uh, versatile player from Sri Lanka. And uh, he led Sri Lanka in T20 team to victory in 2014 World Cup. And he's the only baller to take four wickets, four wickets in four balls in a row, uh, in two occasions even, international cricket. And even uh, he take uh, three ODI hat-tricks, two in T20. So four, uh, I'm repeating again, so that uh, don't confuse it with, his only baller to take four wickets in four balls in a row on two occasions. And 
थ्री ओडीआई हैट्रिक्स एंड टू इन टी ट्वेंटी क्रिकेट सो वेरी वर्सटाइल एंड वेरी यूनिक प्लेयर एंड बॉलिंग स्टाइल इज वेरी यूनिक सो दैट्स वाई दिस प्लेयर वॉज वेरी फेमस इन श्रीलंका सो यू हैव टू जस्ट रिमेंबर इट इज लसित मलिंगा सो मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट सेक्शन इट इज आर इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन सेक्शन यू हैव टू लाइक दिस वीडियो शेयर दिस वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल एंड ज्वाइन अ टेलीग्राम ग्रुप फ्रॉम द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स लिंक हियर इज द क्वेश्चन United Nation Development Program and which bank signed a pact for the dry waste management facility in which city? So uh, you have to uh, tell me the name of the bank. You have to tell me the name of the city. First of all, you have to tell me the name of the city. Name of the city is Noida, and name of the bank is HDFC. So answer of this question is United Nation Development Program and HDFC Bank signed a pact for the dry waste management facility to establish this facility in the city of Noida. So uh, for this, they uh, tied a agreement with the you can say. Um, Greater Noida Industrial Development Authority, which is also known as GNIDA. So you can see here, United Nation Development Program (HDFC) and Greater Noida Authority signed a pact for the dry waste management facility in Noida. And HDFC Bank is providing financial assistance of rupees three crore. How many? Uh, uh, how much uh, assistance is provided by HDFC Bank? It is three crore rupees uh, for setting up of this material recovery facility in the Greater Noida. and the waste management program is aligned with the swachh bharat mission or the clean india mission and the ban will not apply to commodities made on the compostable plastic so you can just remember plastic waste management program of united nation development program will bring a sustainable infrastructure to dispose waste material and reuse it for the different purposes and uh, uh, recently a rule was changed that manufacturing import stocking distribution sale and use of the identified single use plastic will be prohibited with effect from the 1st of july 2022 but the ban will not apply to the commodities made of the compostable plastic remember compostable plastic and uh, this also permitted the thickness of the plastic bags which is in microns like 50 micron is currently going on will be increased to 75 microns by the 30th of september 2021 and 120 micron by the uh, 31st of december 2022 now 50 microns 50 micron thickness plastic bag is currently in market now we have to uh, you can say increase the thickness now it is 75 microns by the 30th of september 2021 but in 2022 last 2022 we will increase this thickness to 120 micron and remember undp undp was established in 1965 and its headquarter is in new york united states of america Moving to next, it is the question from the picture. International Day of Democracy celebrated on fifteenth of September two thousand twenty-one. Very important question. And International Day of Democracy annually observed on this day to provide an opportunity to review the state of democracy across the globe. And the day also promotes democratic principles, value of freedom, and respect for the human right. And the first ever International Day for Democracy was observed in the year of two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Now question is. Why 15th of September is uh, selected as a International Day of Democracy? Because this day marks the adoption of the Universal Declaration on Democratic by the Inter-Parliamentary Union in 1997. So this organization is again very important, International or Inter-Parliamentary Union. It is a global organization for the national parliaments, and uh, president is Durath. President is Durath Peshicho. Peshicho. and the secretary general is martin and headquarter is in geneva and you can remember it was established in 1889 1889 year is very unique because uh, uh, hitler was also born in 1889 jawaharlal nehru was also born in 1889 and even this organization was also uh, uh, you can say started on 1889 so remember this moving to the one liner important point here is the first point punjab and sindh bank ties up with the in india bulls So Punjab and Sindh Bank signed a strategic co-lending alliance with the India Bulls Commercial Credit and India Bulls Housing Finance Limited for MSME and the priority sector uh, housing loans. So it means the bank will uh, provide maximum to maximum eighty percent loan on their books, and this uh, NBFC, which is India Bulls, can provide minimum to minimum twenty percent. This is the guidelines of the RBI. Next, PNB to sell its twenty three percent stake from Choice. So. earlier uh, this uh, choice is uh, basically uh, known as uh, you can say canara hsbc obc life insurance enterprise or life insurance company so uh, uh, earlier this share was with another bank but the pnb uh, 
has now 23% stake, but all the stake, like 23% stake, will be uh, uh, will be uh, sold uh, will be sell by PNB. So you can remember, entire stake is 23%, and it is sell by PNB in the choice. And choice stands for Canada HSBC OBC Life Insurance Company. It is a joint stock company. Next is um, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare signs five MOU with the private companies to initiate pilot projects for the digital agriculture. So very important because these type of MOUs are on the lines of the digital agriculture mission that has been initiated recently from 2021 to 2025 by the center government for project based on the new technology. And these MOUs emphasize the modernization of agriculture sector that will further aid in increasing the income of the farmer because we have a target till 2022 we have to double the income of farmer. Next Ministry of Tourism uh, sanctions rupees 200 crore for the tourism uh, development in the northeastern region, especially in the northeastern region. So, uh, for this Prashad scheme is there, P R A S A D. Prashad stands for Pilgrimage, Rejuvenation and Spiritual Augmentation Drive and uh, Union Minister for Tourism, G Kishan Reddy. G Kishan Reddy sanctioned re this rupees 200 crore for the tourism development in the northeastern region. And under various schemes and the flagship initiatives, the tourism ministry is taking an effort to provide branding and marketing assistance to the northeastern region so that this region can be connected with the rest of India. Ministry of Panchayati Raj launched dashboard towards the implementation of Swamitav scheme. First of all, you have to remember what is the meaning of this Swamitav. Swamitav stands for Survey of Villages, Survey of Villages Abadi and mapping with improvised technology in the village area. So uh, they will do the, uh, they will uh, provide the maps or they will survey all the village areas through drones. So this is the Swamitav scheme. And uh, remember this was launched in 2021 on 24th of April on the National Panchayati Raj Day. On National Panchayati Raj Day, this scheme was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And the scheme was established under the Ministry of Panchayati Raj. So the main objective is to provide property cards to legal aid owners of the rural inhabited areas by mapping the land using drone technology. Using drone technology. And um, uh, who is currently the Ministry of Panchayati Raj? Giri Raj Singh Ji. And he launched this uh, uh, dashboard. And this dashboard is set to monitor the implementation of Swamitav scheme which is targeted to be implemented across India by the year of 2024. This is the target of uh, Swamitav scheme. Next, BLS International partners with the National uh, Health Authority to process Ayushman Bharat cards. So, BLS International, a information and technology service management company, uh, was authorized by the National Health Authority for digital processing of Ayushman Bharat card under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. The cards will enable beneficiaries for the cashless and the paperless access to health services in hospitals covered under the uh, Ayushman Bharat or the Prime Minister Jan Arogya Yojana. And the Indian government providing health insurance of rupees 5 lakh per family per annum under this Prime Minister Janarogya Yojana. Next, SEBI levied rupees 1 lakh fine on the employee of Titan for disclosure lapses. So, this is huge. Uh, like Securities and Exchange Board of India, the reg regulatory body for the securities and commodity market, uh, has levied a monetary pen penalty of rupees 1 lakh on the Chandan Gupta, on Chandan Gupta, an employee of the Titan company limited for disclosure lapses in the violating the insider trading norms. Uh, he transacted in firm securities on two occasions in the calendar quarter ending uh, on in 2018. And the total value he traded was more than 10 lakh rupees. So Sebi puts 1 lakh rupees to this Chandan uh, Gupta. So just uh, remember that uh, uh, he was Titan employee. Just read this line. So now we are moving to the question of the day. What was the question of 15th of September? Very simple question. Who coined the term Hindu rate of growth for the Indian economy? So, Hindu rate of growth refers to the uh, low annual growth rate of the socialist economy of India before 1991. Because after 1991, LPG reforms was there. So, we are uh, basically now mixed economy. But before 1991, India was uh, majorly socialist economy. So, the Hindu rate of growth refers to the low annual growth rate, low annual growth rate of the socialist economy of India before 1991, which uh, stagnated around 3.5% from 1950s. Uh, to 1980s, Early, uh, while per capita income growth rate was 1.3%, that was very low growth rate. And the term was coined by a very famous Indian economist and name was Raj Krishna. So answer of this question is 3. And uh, this committee or this, uh, uh, you can say, economist suggested that the low growth rate of India, a country with a high Hindu population was in sharp contrast to high growth rates in other Asian countries, especially the Eastern Asian countries, which are also newly independent. So, uh, this is the low growth rate of India. 
uh, so you can just remember why it is known as hindu growth rate because of the high population of hindus so remember it is raj krishna so now we are moving to the question of the day what is the question merchant banking is an institution which provides finances to so read these options carefully i am waiting your answer and uh, i am uh, basically assuming that all the students will give this answer i am waiting your answer so like this video share this video as maximum as possible and subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and uh, you can also share this video as maximum as possible and press this bell button and also join our telegram channel the benefit is that you will receive the notification on time and it is a fair cloud promise it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section and don't take life so much serious life is fun always be happy like this smiley thank you guys take care and bye bye